Yo, what's up everyone? My name is Dave and you suck at programming. And today we're going to talk about exit codes on Unix and Unix-like operating systems. We're going to be using Bash, but this applies to any programming language out there really, because this is more specific to the operating system. But yeah, we're going to talk about exit codes and one very specific pitfall you got to watch out for, something to be aware of that you may not even know. Uh, so yeah, let's jump into it. So the first thing we have here is a nice little script called simple. This is a very simple script, right? We echo hello. That's all we do. It's a Bash script. You run it and it echoes hello. Why is this important? Because what is our exit code here? Zero. It worked, right? We exited with zero. That's awesome. We didn't explicitly call exit zero. We didn't have that here. Nope. We just let the script run and it exited successfully. Why did it exit successfully? I'm going to show you a fun little trick about this. Because what if it failed? Can I make this fail? How can I make echo fail? Well, actually, what if I wrote it to dev full. This is a device that exists in your system that's always going to simulate a device that's always full. So if I run this, operation not permitted. We can't write to it. What if I run this now? We get an exit code of one. Isn't that interesting? Our script, which doesn't explicitly call exit anywhere, failed. How did it fail? That's because when we're in bash, the exit code, if not specified directly, if we don't call exit here, or even if we call exit without an argument, it will be the command that was last run. So we get the exit code of echo here for free. That's how it works. If you want to override that, we can look at the next one. Let's look at failure over here. We have uh-oh, and then we exit with one. So the cool thing about this is it will always echo with one. There's nothing we could do. Even if we were to write it to dev full, I mean, what would this do? It would just cause it to echo one anyways. But it's the same thing. We get an error, but we get one. We, the reason we get one is because we very explicitly state we want to exit with one. And look at dollar question mark that's how you can get that information it's zero here because ls was the last command that ran so what can we do here i'm going to illustrate a concept for you let's look at this script let's take the code from the user as the first argument and then exit with that code okay cool what does this illustrate well if we exit with 50 we can echo dollar question mark and we get 50. that's pretty cool if we exit with i don't know 200 we get 200 it's almost like an http status code it's not don't think of it that way, but you could think of it that way. You might be thinking, oh my God, if I wrote a program like curl or something, I could just exit the status code directly, right? That won't be a problem because if I want to simulate a 404, like they try to get a file that doesn't exist, we could just exit 404 and they get 148. So yeah, not that great. What's going on here? How can you get 148 from 404? That seems kind of interesting. Well, 200 seemed to work, right? So let's go ahead and let's try and find where the problem is, right? So 300 gives you 400 or 44. So what's going on here? What's 300 minus 44? Maybe that's a way to work through this. I don't know. Let's try 254. I already know the answer. That's why I'm cheating here. 254 gives us 254. That's great. 255 gives us 255. That's great. 256 gives us zero. And now we've wrapped around. So what's going on here? We can exit in bash an integer. We have 64-bit integers. Um, they might technically be slightly less. I don't know, don't quote me on that. We basically have 64-bit integers. The problem is the exit code from the operating system chops off everything. It only cares about the last eight bits, so it will truncate everything to an eight-bit number. This is effectively the same as modularly dividing it by 256, or two raised to the eighth power. Um, so that's how we could calculate this beforehand. So like before, when we, what do we do? 404, and that gave us 148. We can modularly divide this by 256, and we will get 148. That's how that's determined. Now, this is the same in any programming language. If you're in C and you try to return 404 in your main method, it will show up as 148 for the program that's calling it. So that's kind of a problem. Why is it a problem? Because I've seen code like this in the while. I have seen people write code like this, where they set code equal to zero, they loop over an unbounded number of arguments that a user can pass in, and then they do some work. In this example, we're just trying to SSH in the machine. This is a contrived example. They're SSHing the machine. If it fails, they increment the code. Now, this might seem like a good idea. I know I named the script bad idea. I'm kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> forecasting that it might not be good. But let's imagine we try to give it, I don't know, three arguments here. We tried to SSH in all three of those. We got problems. And now our exit code is three. So we know three machines failed. It seems like this would be useful, right? If I gave it five arguments and we had an exit code of three, we know that three out of the five failed. That's not great. That seems like it's useful to transmit that information, but why is this a problem? This is a problem because what if I wanted to SSH 
into the whole entire IP range, into 256 hosts, what happens now? Well, we get a lot of failures. And then when we run the, uh, we check the exit code, it looks like it exited with zero. It looks like it's successful. It didn't. We exited with 256, but that data was lost. We can't find this. So if you ever find yourself writing code like this, stop. Don't do that. Do this idea instead. This is what you should be doing. Instead of incrementing this code, because you increment it based on the amount of arguments the user passes, you're secretly letting user data influence what you, the programmer, what this program actually does. You might not realize it, but you're letting user data influence how this program acts. That's not good. You can change how the program acts, but you can't change the data the program returns. That's what I'm. That's the distinction I'm trying to draw here. So in this example, if any SSH command fails, we just set this to one. This would be no different. Uh, a different way to write this is we could say error equals zero. Otherwise, error equals one. Um, we're using exit codes here, so that's what I'm talking about. But the example here, the idea here is that we set the error flag to zero. If any one or many SSH commands fail, we just turn on the flag. If a subsequent one fails, it basically has no um, effect here because the flag was already turned on. This is a better way of doing it, so then we exit this code. We don't have to worry about it wrapping at 256. We have a very strict binary of did this work? Yes or no. So this is the proper way to handle exit codes. Yo, and real quick, just want to give a shout out to my patrons over at Patreon. Thank you for your continued support. It's what makes this kind of content possible. Thank you, Fractal, Bubsky, Nick, Hawk. Thank you now to Greg as well. Uh, yeah, appreciate it. Thank you so much.